Hello everybody, welcome back to Edge Sports Network. We have another interview for you guys today with Jordan Miller, George Mason, men's basketball. Jordan, thanks so much for joining us on the site today. Thank you for having me. That means a lot. Great to have you on. We're looking forward to what you have to say. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. We're really glad that you could take the time to be on. We're going to start here in your high school career. I know you're the all-time leading scorer at your high school. You were selected to a 2018 first team all metro and you were in one of the nation's most competitive basketball regions you also earned a vhsl 4a player of the year as a junior so how big are those accomplishments for you confidence wise before you start your career in college basketball how that kind of translate to the next level uh you know winning those awards it was good uh it was a token of my hard work mm -hmm. i believe um actually when I finished high school. I was so excited to start college. Mm -hmm. I uh, I try I try to put in a lot of extra work to make sure that I'd fit in. But uh, as you know, my freshman year, uh, I redshirted mm -hmm. after season, so a lot of it was strength for me. I, I wasn't as strong as these older guys who were obviously in the program before me. Um, I come from Loudoun County, where the ball isn't as physical as it was, so it was kind of a shock for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, transitioning, but all in all, my teammates and coaches did a really good job to help uh, acclimate me to kind of the play style and the speed of things. And so I feel like my transition from high school to college was was a smooth transition. Yeah, I mean, I read that growing up you were kind of undersized as well until you had a growth spurt. But obviously, when you're a little bit undersized, you kind of got to learn some skills in order to get around defenders. Uh, kind of find a way to, you know, work into the paint and stuff, avoid the defenses. So how do you think those skills kind of helped you? Uh, I mean, obviously now you're much taller, much bigger, but you keep those skills with you. How do you think that's kind of helped you later on here in your career in college basketball? Yeah, um, I started off uh, probably seventh grade. That's when I really got into AAU basketball, sixth mm -hmm. grade, seventh grade. I was one of the shortest, if not the shortest on the team. And so, being the shortest, I ran a lot of point guard, a lot of guard mm -hmm. for uh, my AAU team, D1 SA Spartans. Um, so, in ninth grade, I actually came off an injury, and mm -hmm. I was on crutches for most of the summer, sadly. Oh, wow. Uh, I noticed when I got off of crutches, I was significantly taller. I was holding on to the rim. I was touching the backboard. I was just jumping all over the place. And I think my biggest growth for it happened when I was actually injured. Oh, wow. funny. And so when I came back, um, a lot of those guard skills that I had were still there because that's the last thing I did with last, uh, the last time I played. So mm -hmm. it, it was a little funky at first, but there's nothing that a lot of training and hard work can't uh, help you do. Yeah, I mean, you certainly got used to it, it seemed like. Well, we're going to talk about your career, of course, at George Mason. But before we dive into that, I mean, what really made you choose George Mason, you know, for basketball? I know it's pretty close to where you grew up. So did you look at anywhere like far away as well? Or did you, did you know you kind of wanted to stay close to home? Because um, I know, you know, a lot of guys that we've talked to here on the site, some choose to go far away, some choose to stay close to home. It really just depends on their personal preference. For you, was it that location factor or was it just, you know, I'm going to go where ever fits me best. I don't care if it's far. I don't care if it's close. I'm just looking at a system type thing. Or was it just kind of that comfort of home that you wanted to stay near? Uh, honestly, I'd say it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, I was never the type of guy to really want to go far. But at the same time, Coach Paulson, uh, he came to every single one of my AU games. He was mm -hmm. I always knew he was going to be there, just strictly on his reputation of him saying he's going to be there. He was there even when we were uh, out in uh, California surprisingly he was there so oh, wow. I really felt like they were really interested and when I went to visit the campus was beautiful the players were welcoming so I really knew this would be a good fit for me here yeah I mean you certainly fit well in your freshman year and you could tell that a relationship had been built there played in 17 games started in 16 you averaged 10.4 points 7.1 rebounds shot the ball at 61 percent so I know a lot of guys, especially playing in Division One basketball, they don't really get those opportunities freshman year. And sometimes that takes a toll later on in their career. But your freshman season, you're able to come in, build team chemistry, get opportunities right away. 
how that help you to kind of build up relationships with your teammates uh, for the remainder of your time at George Mason and how to kind of give you confidence to show, hey, I can perform at this level and at a pretty, pretty impressive success rate. Right. Um, you know, coming in as a freshman, it's huge. Uh, it's kind of the first couple moments of a game or your games in general is kind of, you kind of see, kind of ask yourself, do I belong here? Mm -hmm. And so uh, after going to Armar, coming off some injuries uh, and me lifting my red shirt, and I played in that first game and I did relatively well, I, I knew I could fit in here and I, I could thrive. Uh, There's just a lot of work that was going to need to get put in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we got to love the grind. And uh, it really helped set up for my sophomore season because I wasn't expecting to play freshman year, honestly. Mm -hmm. And sophomore year when it came up, uh, after I'm in sophomore year, after the freshman season, uh, I was really excited. I felt like I had tasted a little bit of what it's like to go to battle with, with all my teammates, and I was happy with it, and I knew they all had my back. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of just smooth sailing from there. Yeah, I mean, you really built off that freshman year. Somehow you even improved sophomore year after a solid freshman season. I know this past year you had 32 minutes a game. 12.7 points, 5.3 rebounds, 1.4 assists, and you're still efficient shooting the ball at 45%. So, I mean, what would you kind of do in the offseason to keep that efficiency up? Um, I know sometimes it's really tough in the offseason, especially your first, you know, real offseason in college basketball. How would you kind of stay focused and make sure that you made an improvement heading into sophomore year? Yeah, so uh, freshman year, you know, due to injuries, I had to play uh, a position that I usually don't play. I didn't play at all, actually, in high school mm -hmm. um, at, at the forward position. And so that summer, freshman year summer, was focused on getting getting back to what I was used to, getting my guard skills, sharpening them. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, was, it was difficult at first, you know, playing. I, I came in as a freshman, redshirted, wasn't expected to play. I, I came in, just got rebounds. I didn't really come off ball screens. I didn't shoot the ball that much, you know. It was a very easy, easy role for me to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And knowing that uh, coaching staff told me that they're going to need a little bit more out of me this the next year, my sophomore year. And so I just kind of put my mind to developing my perimeter skills and my guard skills and really focusing on my shot and trying to maintain, but also gain, get 1% get better at something and get better at something that will help me uh, have an edge over my opponents in the following season. So, I mean, that's the, I, I love the grind. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot of ambition. Um, I'm all for working at something and seeing it pay off in the future. And so in the moment, it was, it was easy to stay focused. Um, I'm, a, I'm surrounded by a great group of guys. And coaches mm -hmm. who love me. So, I mean, it, it's just fun. It was just fun in general. The summer was fun. Yeah, I mean, sophomore year, you looked like you were having a lot of fun. You were really consistent. You were in double figures 23 games this year, including the last 12 of the year. Um, so, as I mentioned, you're just very consistent. I think part of that comes from the fact that you can score both inside and outside. You've had a 33% three-point percentage over the past couple of years. Do you kind of attribute um, that outside scoring to your – you know, guard history and then the inside scoring to where you are now? Because obviously you have both skills. You know, when you're playing at the forward position, some guys are, you know, decent from outside now. We're seeing an NBA where the three-point shot's so important nowadays. But right. it's pretty tough to develop a shot mid-career. So do you kind of attribute that to the history as a guard? Or was it something you've kind of learned, you know, in your time at, at GMU? Um, I mean, definitely in my history of, uh, of being a guard, uh, you know, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything, finish, mm -hmm. uh, shoot the outside shot, mid-range game. Um, so when I got to GMU, I, I lost a little bit of confidence, not going to lie, because, you know, being a freshman and a uh, program coach wanting to, you know, redshirt you and think it's the best decision it does mm -hmm. take a toll on you. It kind of does hit the confidence a little bit. But, I mean, mm -hmm. it's all about how you approach it. You can approach it two ways. You could either say, oh, wow, I don't feel that good anymore. Or you can mm -hmm. kind of just stick with it and go with the grind. And so I think I stuck with it. And after that, the coaching staff thought it would be a good decision. And they helped me develop my three-point shooting and my outside shooting. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I, like I said, I lost a little bit of confidence that I kind of had in high school. And so getting those reps back up, getting those shots back up, 
I felt back in my natural flow, and I think uh, it paid off this season. Yeah, I think it really did too. And I know, you know, we've talked to a lot of guys that have redshirted, and they've mentioned it is a little bit frustrating, and it's tough to stay the course right there. But I think you did a really good job of doing that. And I know this past year you dropped your career high, 25 points, in just the third game of the year. So when you're coming off the off season, as you mentioned, you, you might have lost a little bit of confidence. But when you have a game like that so early on in the season, what does that do for the rest of your year? And how do you kind of get in a rhythm that early in the season? Yeah, so, you know, the early parts of the season are really important because it kind of helps you see – where where you're gonna where your open shots are gonna come from, where the good spots to shoot at, because uh, you know you play against each other, you play against your teammates every day in practice, and so they kind of get the hang of, they kind of know which way you like to go, where you mm -hmm. like to shoot from, and mm -hmm. so playing against different competition and seeing, okay, here's where I can score from, here's where I can be more efficient from, it really helps, and it kind of it kind of pushes you and you kind of just drill one area of your game because you know that's where the open spots are going to be. And so you just work at it and, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you, I think something else that really, you know, probably does help is, is the conference you're in. I mean, the A-10 is so competitive. It was pretty good this year, especially. You got teams like Dayton, Richmond, you know, St. Louis. You got you guys, VCU. Um, so, I mean, how does it help to kind of play in a conference like that? I know you've had some experience in the tournament as well, the Atlantic 10 tournament. We'll get into that a little bit after here. But when you're in a conference like that, playing against competitive teams night in, night out, how does that help you as a player? Yeah, uh, the A-10 is filled with a bunch of great teams. Mm -hmm. uh, every game is competitive. Uh, anybody can be anybody on any given night. And so when you know when you play against that high level of competition, it, it kind of gives you a, a, a drive to to want to be the best and to want to prove every night that okay, all this off season work that we've put in, uh, you know we've worked hard, we want it, mm -hmm. we're, we're hungry. And so playing against all these great players, like Dayton had a good squad this year, it was fun. You know we all have our own relationships. Like a couple of the guys, you know, we just talk, catch up, see how they've been. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, all in all, I love playing in this league. I think it's a full with a bunch of great players, and I'm excited for the two years that I have left. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly just such high competition, and I know, you know, the Atlantic 10 tournament is something kind of everyone looks forward to. Um, so I know you've had experience, uh, you know, first couple of years with that. What is it like going into the into the tournament like that? I mean, I would assume stakes are a little bit higher. Um, nerves might be a little bit higher, too. But, you know, that's end of the year right there, kind of what everyone looks forward to, that in the NCAA tournament. I know this year was really weird with everything, um, but, I mean, what's kind of the hopes for the tournament? How do you feel? What's the atmosphere like playing in front of so many people when the stakes are that high? Right. So, I mean, throughout the whole conference regular season, you, you kind of know, okay, we're doing all this to build for the mm -hmm. tournament, to make a run in the tournament. And so we kind of we're, we're really focused. We got our eyes on the prize on what we want to do and where we're going to be at. So we really do, the coaching staff does a really good job of evaluating us and uh, kind of telling us, OK, this is this is working now. But when the conference tournament, when the, uh, when the time comes, it may not work. So uh, I think we do a good job of staying locked in and keeping keeping us, you know, hungry for the tournament mm -hmm. and all that and playing in front of everybody it's it's, it's great because you know you don't get to play in front of everybody like that in the normal regular season because mm -hmm. this now is when it counts and everybody's playing their best basketball you've had the whole year to develop so i mean it's exciting you know it's just kind of what you play for you, you live for those moments you put your shoes on you lace them up for those kind of moments and so it's fun I'm sure it's a great experience. It's kind of what every kid dreams of doing growing up when they're shooting outside in the driveway, going down to the park, shoot hoops with some friends, playing pickup basketball. It's kind of what everyone looks forward to right there. And I know that you have two years left of eligibility. So, I mean, personally, like, what are you looking forward to in these last two years? You're going to be an upperclassman now. You're going to be one of the leaders on the team. You already were, but now you're going to be, you know, one of these mentors to some of the younger guys. So what are you kind of looking forward to? Where are you kind of trying to lead George Mason in these last two years you have with the team? And, you know, what's ultimately the goal for not only yourself, but the team as well? Yeah, um, we got some great freshmen coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, get them acclimated as soon as possible. I think they could be really helpful uh, even when they come right in 
it's going to be fun. We've talked before, so I'm excited with those guys. And uh, for the future of this program kind of thing, uh, I think we have a great squad returning, and a, mm-hmm. we're going to have a great squad. We're full of just a, a group of hardworking guys who, you know, just love to be in the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as goals-wise, uh, this offseason has been a really important offseason for me. Mm-hmm. Sadly, with this coronavirus, thing going on I I haven't been able to be in the gym as much as I should be but I've taken the time to kind of just expand my knowledge on the game watching a lot of MJ watching a lot of Mm -hmm. uh, Kobe uh, rest in peace Kobe and kind of just learning and I've learned a lot this offseason and I think I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason and Mm -hmm. um, obviously sorry for everybody who lost a family member to this corona but uh, a positive would be I, I got to really study the game in a way that I never have before. So uh, just learning leadership skills, footwork, fundamentals, kind of anything mechanical from, you know, MJ, Michael Jordan, the greatest to ever do it, mm-hmm. has been really helpful. And I, I'm excited to transition these from seeing them to actually doing them when uh, everything gets running back up. Yeah, hopefully everything gets back on track soon. I'm sure you watch the MJ documentary now. Now that you bring up MJ, um, I mean, what you what what were your thoughts on the documentary here? I mean, that was one of the best documentaries I know I've seen. I mean, I'm sure you thought the same. Yeah, I, I honestly I didn't know much because I was born in 2000, so mm-hmm. I was kind of the end of MJ's era. So this documentary was really good for me because I got to see what kind of he was all about versus just hearing about him. And I, mm-hmm. I honestly, I, before I was torn between who I thought was the greatest to do it, LeBron or MJ, but I mean, I got to give it to Michael Jordan with the physicality that they were playing with back then. The courts didn't really have any grip. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I just think I loved his grind and the way the way he approached things in a, in a seriousness. And nowadays, a lot of people kind of just play for fun, which is which is fine. But mm-hmm. you know, if you really want to win, you got to sacrifice some things. And I think that documentary. Kind of was an eye opener for me. That's what I'm saying. See, I I like the way you think. I was born in '99, so we're the same generation here. I think too many people in our generation say LeBron. They don't even look at Jordan. It's Jordan. Personally, I think it's Jordan. But I think yeah, me too. There we go. See, I like the way you're thinking here. This is good. This is real good. <laughs> we're gonna have to we're gonna have to promote that section of the interview really well right there. You know what you're talking about. That's what we like to see here on Ed Sports Network. We need we need more of that. We need more players like you, with the with the right reason of thought here. So, I mean, to close up here, um, what advice would you give? I always like to end, you know, on this question here. What advice would you give to kids growing up, um, that kind of want to follow your path here, follow your footsteps, play Division One basketball at the level you're playing at? What advice would you give to them? Uh, my biggest thing would be as kind of cliche as it sounds which is to be to believe in yourself you know mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people doubt themselves and i doubted myself too but if you really believe in yourself and you set your mind to something you really can achieve whatever you want and you know don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it because you really can mm-hmm. and just stick to it there's going to be good days there's going to be bad days but you know take them as they come and just enjoy it and enjoy the process and enjoy the grind and you know the hard work is going to pay off whether it be today, tomorrow, next week, next month, just keep working at it. I think that's great advice. Smart man right here. You know MJ is the greatest of all time, so trust his I word on that. <laughs> trust his word on that. He knows what he's talking about, folks. But Jordan Miller, George Mason University men's basketball. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us here on the site today. I really appreciate it. As always, you know, I'm whenever you want, I'm here. We definitely love to have you on again in the future. We're going to put your Twitter down below so that people can follow your career, follow you this season and next, and follow in the NCAA. Um, and guys, you can also check out George Mason's basketball page for news and updates. We'll put a link down there as well. But Jordan Miller, everyone, thanks so much for joining us on the site. Thank you guys for joining us here for this interview as well. And we'll see you guys next time here on Ed Sports Network.